I first came across Langard's music when I was in um, a week of trying out work as cellist in the Danish National Symphony Orchestra when I was 14 or something like that. And they were performing his sixth symphony. And I was intrigued and I wanted to hear more. So I listened to various recordings and eventually, some years later, I got to know Music of the Spheres. I knew nothing like that piece and I still don't know anything, any other music quite like that. It is simply deeply original music where time is suspended, where space plays a role, the high pitches, the low pitches, the sense of being lifted from Earth. And I guess that is the whole point. We are in the spheres. For the musicians, of course, it is a huge challenge that we, that we are performing with so, so great distances. Um, visually and orally, it is a, it, we are challenged to the utmost. It's the first time I've played it, I've never experienced anything like it. We're in this magnificent um, cathedral with a totally unconventional setup for us as a symphony orchestra. Of course, in a conventional concert hall, we sit close together um, and things are lit from above generally, and the audience are quite separated from us here. The way it's been set out and the way Thomas has conceived it is that we are very much uh, immersed in. Uh, different sounds from the orchestra. For example, I, I sit in the middle underneath the conductor, Thomas, um, but I have French horns to my right and I have trumpets to my left. The, the cellos are then on the other side and the bass is even further. And my section, the violin section, and the second violin sections extend in a long line with then the winds behind. So, so many things are different. And to have the audience so incredibly close and involved is a uh, very special and I think something that we won't fully realise till we do it in the concert setting. There's a little passage for offstage orchestra performed over, we perform over here, and singer, she sings about pain and anguish as if it was pleasant. Um, it is kind of Strauss inspired music. The piece describes this, uh, the end of time, and my job is to be the offstage ethereal voice, quite psychedelic. Um, this, the text says, in, the, in a world of sorrow and joy, you can allow your soul to dream and rest, and I'm sort of the messenger of that idea. As you can see, we're using most of Glasgow Cathedral here, and it's quite an interesting process because uh, we're in a different part of the cathedral to the rest of the orchestra and we've had um, screens up so that we can see different conductors beating at the same time but in different places. So it's quite confusing, but um, hopefully should be an exciting night. The chorus enters singing an absurd text, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, the names of, of notes, making absolutely no sense of it, but singing it like they believe in it fanatically. The choir is really interesting in this piece. It's interspersed throughout the piece and serves to kind of tell the narrative of the journey from the chaos of our mortal world into the ecstasy and peace of the afterlife. The challenge is uh, always working with an orchestra. It's quite different from working with piano. So especially in this piece, which is very minimalistic, just finding your notes and finding a way to give meaning to this kind of obscure idea of the text and some nonsense words. So I'm very excited that we are here in this beautiful space, just perfect for it. I think he would have loved it. I'm the director of music here at Glasgow Cathedral. Um, I've been here since 2014 and my job involves rehearsing the choir and really coordinating all of the musical outputs of the cathedral. The building we're standing in today began in 1136 and has been expanded over the years. The cathedral began life as a Roman Catholic cathedral and then the Reformation came along and for the next 500 years it's largely been a Church of Scotland congregation, although at one point in the Reformation we had a bishop and a minister at the same time. 
I'm playing organ for the Langard, a piece that is meant to represent everything all the way to heaven. And in a way, the organ does that as well, with everything from huge, fat pedal notes all the way to sparkly mixtures and everything else above that. It's used to represent a huge variety of emotions, from the very loud, strident beginning when the organ comes in, all the way to fading out to a lovely, quiet carpet of sound, which underpins the rest of the orchestra. And I think this is a special piece because it's, um, it's surround sound, so the audience should get an experience of uh, being in sort of an IMAX cinema with noises behind them and in front of them and it's quite unexpected uh, what they should hear so it's quite exciting to be a part of that and to be a part of this otherworldly noise that's going on in the background while the, the main event is in front of the audience. It is really a deeply original work and uh, I keep coming back to it. <laughs>